Alrighty, how's it going, Earth Science? Uh, so we are going to do some rock sequencing, some uh, relative ages of rocks is, is another way that a lot of people like to call us. Um, and essentially what we're going to be doing is looking at some rock layers, some fault lines, maybe some igneous intrusions, and figuring out what came first. So we're kind of playing like Sherlock Holmes a little bit. Uh, we want to figure out the order of events, the, the crime scene, what happened first. Um, and so, instead of like an actual crime scene, like all we might see in my forensics class, what we're going to be looking at is something that looks a little bit like this. So, we have some rock layers, we have a fault line, we have an igneous intrusion that's letter D on the, on the uh, little cross section here. Um, and we want to figure out what happened first, and what what is the youngest, what is the oldest. Okay, so... Um, you might have some ideas of what came first already. Um, we're going to come back to this image in a second. I'm going to first talk about how we can sequence things and, and the basic rules to it, and then we're going to come back to this actual picture, uh, and we're going to do it together. Alrighty, so let's take a look at that. So, two basic rules to sequence um, any of these cross sections. Um, first and foremost, um, and this is something that we've already talked about, is that layers uh, will form horizontally just naturally. Uh, a soil layer will naturally form horizontally on top of what was already existing there. Um, and this gives you a really good idea of the basic order to things, because if something formed horizontally on top of what, all, what was already present, then that means that the horizontal layer on top is younger than the horizontal layers underneath it, right? Um, for instance, if we go back into this picture, like for instance, on the left side here, we have uh, layer A on top of layer B. Well, layer A couldn't have existed on top of layer B unless layer B was already there. And so layer B, we can naturally say, is probably going to be older than layer A, okay? Just because it is, well, further down. So that's the first thing. And the second thing, and these rules are, are fairly basic and give you a really good idea, is for a fault or an igneous intrusion to break through a rock layer, well, that rock layer had to already be there at the time of the igneous intrusion or the fault line. So this is layer, um, but that should say fault line. I'm sorry for that. Um, so if we know that an igneous intrusion or a fault line had to be there or had to break through a rock layer that was already there, well, then we could say that the fault line or the igneous intrusion, well, is younger. So if a fault line cuts through a rock layer, then the fault line is younger than the actual rock layer. Um, and so let's take a look back at this picture here. Um, we have a whole bunch of different rock layers. So let's see here first. So we can say, based off of what we've just talked about, we could probably say that C, whoops, C right there, is probably older than B, and it is probably older than A, right? And so C is actually, notice that C also has this fault line cutting through it, which means that fault line E, whoa, fault line E had to have existed, or had to happen, after rock layer C was already there, right? Because if the fault line cuts through rock layer C, well then rock layer C had to be there at the time of the fault line. And same thing with the igneous intrusion D right here. Because igneous intrusion D cut through rock layer C, well C had to exist, so C is actually the oldest one. And that same logic can be used for B and A as well, right? B and A also have the intrusion cut through it, they also have the fault line cut through it. So that means the fault line and the intrusion had to happen after B and A had already formed. And because A is generally horizontally on top of layer B, we could say that A is younger than B. So C is going to be our absolute oldest in this picture. Uh, B is going to be our second oldest. And A is going to be our third oldest. Um, and then after that, well, let's look at, at intrusion E and, uh, or sorry, intrusion D and fault line E, and I want to figure out which one of these two happened first. So notice that 
that intrusion D is actually cut by the fault line. And if the intrusion D is cut by the fault line, then that means that the fault line had to happen after the intrusion was already made, right? Because if it wasn't, then the fault, then the intrusion would just cut through and continue on its way this way after. And that's exactly what it did when it first was um, intruding onto these rocks, right? Going up to the surface, but the fault line made it so that after it had cooled off, after it had solidified, then it, it cut it. And so we're going to say that D is older than E based off of that logic. And that's kind of what these are, just like a little logic puzzle. And so this is the order that these um, rocks happen. E was the most recent event. D was the, whoops, D was the second most recent. Then A, then B, then C. Alrighty, not too shabby. So another small question for you. How about we do this one? Which came first, um, fault line J or igneous intrusion M? Now this is the time where we can go all Dora the Explorer and I can pause for five seconds. Um, or you could pause the video and just take a thought to it. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and answer it. So because M intruded on all, to the, all of these rocks, and fault line J alters that, right? It cuts through it, right? We could see that these don't line up right here. We can say that the fault had to have cut these rocks after M intruded and went to the surface. So which came first, fault line J or igneous intrusion M? The answer is igneous intrusion. Whoa, igneous intrusion M. Alrighty. One last one, and this one you're going to do on your own. And so this is um, one of your um, choice assignments. Uh, or actually, sorry, no, this isn't one of your choice assignments of the week. This is going to replace your multiple choice that you would normally do this week. Um, it's actually a little bit easier, right? So you don't even have to do a multiple choice this week. What you have to do is message me on Schoology um, the sequence of these rocks. And so um, I want you to tell me what is the sequence of these rocks and um, you can like I said you can either message me on Schoology or you can um, email me the the answer to it. Alrighty let's stop this stream and stop this recording and um, hope all is well and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye guys.